this video is a documentation of creating a web form filling activity in UiPath to make entering data into the Google form a little bit easy, especially when you have a number of entries to be made. I used uh, UiPath and I just wanted to document the information so that I can use it later if need be. So let's see what we are going to do and how we are going to do it. Once the process file is created, we are going into that activity center and uh, this is what I did, created a flow chart. And in the flow chart, I'm going to add the Excel application scope because I'm taking the data required for filling in the Google form from an Excel. The next thing to do would be to read the data in the Excel sheet. For this, I will be using the Excel read range activity. And in the properties, I would create a variable of a data table that will be created by clicking Ctrl plus K and naming the variable. Once I have the data table with all the information from the Excel, I will only need certain of the values because I'm going to send a report regarding the students that have less marks than 50. So in order to do that, I'm going to filter the data table. So I will act add a filter data table activity and select the data based on a condition. Once I have the data filtered with the new data that I have, I will use the activity again for each row in the table. For each row, I will also change the data into a string by typing in the column title and converting it into string using the information that you see here. Once that is done, then I have to open the Google form into which I have to fill in the data. For that, I would use the activity attached browser. And then select the web page or the Google form, which I will be using. Now, once I have the Google form open, then I can actually type into it. And that's the activity that I'm going to use for each of the information that I have to fill in, for example, the name, the student number, the mark, and the comments, I'm going to type into, I'm use that activity type into. Since there are about four or five entries to be made in a single Google form, I will have to create type into four or five as the case may be. Once I have all of the information filled in, then I have to submit the data. In order to do that, the activity used will be click that will submit the button. Once I submit the button, the Google form will be submitted and it will take me to the next page where I will have to submit the page again if I want to restart entering the data. For that, I use a second click. Once all this is set up, if there are no errors, then I can run the automation. So these are the steps that are going to be adopted. Next, you will see how the whole flow works because I've already created the flow. And once you look at that, you get an idea. And if you can, you can follow making the same thing. Okay, so we are getting started with uh, creating a workflow for filling in a Google form by taking the data from Excel. So here under processes, I'm, I'm just going to a blank process, let's call it uh, filling web form. That's what we're going to do. Create. Okay, so if you look on the left side, we have the main file over here. So we're going to double click on that to start uh, creation of the web flow. And the first thing that I want to do, go to activities. I'm going to start a flow chart. So in the flow chart, what I'm planning to do is bring in some data from Excel and some data reading. So I'm going to do that by using the Excel application scope. 
Let's go. Oh, we'll bring an Excel application scope. And once you have that, we need to point the direction to the Excel file that we're going to use. We're going to select the folder. And uh, I already have a form here. And this is the file I plan to use. Okay. So I have selected the file, the Excel that I'm going to use. The next thing that I'm going to do is I want to read the data in the Excel file. In order to do that, the activity that I'm going to choose is read range. So read range from the Excel file. And if you look in the Excel, the sheet name is period one. So I'm going to change it to period one. So here, this is going to be period one. And that's the name of the sheet. And I want to want the all the data to be read in it. So I'm just going to leave it blank in the range area. So I have the read range. And once it reads the value, it's going to save the data as a data table. And I'm going to create a variable by going to properties, data table, output. I am going to create the variable by selecting control plus K. And then I'm going to do data table underscore marks. That's the name I'm going to use. And if I go over here and check the variables, I want it to be available in the flow chart. So I'm going to select the scopus for the flow chart. This variable is, variable is going to be available to the whole flow chart. So I've created the read range. Let's go back here. We created the Excel application scope. We have the read range. Next, what we need is, I don't need all the data from the Excel. If you look in the Excel, you'll find that I have about 23 names with marks, but I'm trying to select only those students who have got marks less than 50. For instance, number 20, the 20 marks here, there is one student, 29. And I want to select out or filter out those data alone, those students alone. Uh, these are fictitious names of students and numbers just for the sake of making this video. Yeah. So uh, that's what it is. So let's go back and filter the data. In order to do that, I need to select filter data table as the activity. So the data table, and I can filter the data table going over here, dragging and dropping it. And I need to select the data table. The data table that I created and the variable name is, will be DT marks i'm going to select that so the data for filtering is coming from there which was obtained from read range i want to configure the filter select filter and i want to keep the values that are present in a certain column so what i'm going to do is i'm going back to the excel a is the first column by numbering a would be zero b would be one c would be two three, four, E would be four, marks would be four. So I'm going to the fourth column. That's going to be four. And the value is based on the operation here. I want any number less than 50. So less than 50. So if anybody, any of the students have a mark of less than 50, then it's going to filter it. So click okay. I've created the filter and I'm going to write this again into the same data table, which is DT marks. So I have updated the data table after filtering. The next thing that I've got to do is I'm going to look through each row in the data table. For that, I need to have another activity. So the activity is going to be for each row. So when I do for each row in the data table, I can add that. So we will change this to a row and in the data table, DT is what we have. Okay, so that's the error is gone. The next thing that we have to do, so now we have taken the Excel 
we have read the range we created a data table we have filtered the data and we have a new data table with the filtered data and we are going to read through each row and now we're going to submit the data from this into the google form so i should have the google form ready so this is the google form that i am going to use so i've already opened it and so how we can call this uh, google form that's what we're going to do next so we're going to do what we call uh, attach browser so here we will go into the activity and again look for we're going to attach browser so drag and drop here so which means now we have to indicate the browser that we're going to use or the form google form that we're going to fill in click on indicate browser and it shows up so I click anywhere other than any of those entry areas we have selected it now so that's the form that we have so if you go here you can still see you can edit the selector if you need to it's validated that's fine or if you want to re indicate on the screen and validate you can do it over here so we have done that so the next thing that we're going to do is we have to type in the data in order to do that we're going to do type into that's the next activity that we're going to do so reason that i've used is type into so i'm going to do the keyboard entry here type into so here the reality is if you go into the google form you have student name student number course code achievement percentage so one two three four five entries to be made and then you have a submit button so we need five type into values so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to move down and i'm going to paste it five times paste okay now let's enter the data so this is what we're going to do we are really going to we are going to identify which forms or which of the entries have to be made so i'm going to click on the three lines over here indicate on screen so the first thing that you need is you need the student name okay so i'm going to select your answer over here so i have that now I have to select the row I have to give the um, the column name and also convert it into a string that's what we have to do so I'm going to do row brackets quotes and the row name if you go into the excel sheet you will find you're looking at names so this is in a the header would be name so i'm going to put it in name the, sp the spelling should be exact so i'm going to type in name and then i have to change it into a string dot to string okay so i've converted it to a string the error should go away in theory yes it's gone so we have done the first input the second one let's do the second one so this part i'm going to copy so i can still call, paste it into the next ones so i'm going to identify the second form entry indicate on screen it should be on the google form so student name was done student number we have selected that and again we have to change it into a string here so the title for the column or the column name would be let's go and check it's student number two words both capitals student number to string and enter okay that's done the third one we are going to indicate on screen would be for alt tab student number was done now we're going to choose the course code select that and again we have to go to the student number course code that is d 
two words again close code to string so that's also done okay the error is gone again we have the next one after course code it should be the achieve percentage that's the mark we have selected that that i believe would be mark let's just verify it it's mark okay and one more we have to enter the right comment so we are going into credit rescue strategies we have selected that i believe it is column one it's called let's check what the value for the column name is that's column one okay so that's what it is i'm going to select that so i have entered all of them and the errors have gone away for all one two three four five entries next thing that i have to do is i have to submit the form i have to submit the form in order to submit the form i have to type in click so let's go activity click so select that and again i have to indicate on the google form where i have to select the click indicate on screen and it is submit click that's done and once you actually submit the google form this is the page it comes to and submit another response so we have to do a second click for repeating the process so let's go here and add one more submit one more click and in this case we are going to select submit another response so we have that so with that we are done with all the clicks and type into for the whole process so let's save the file okay so it went well and let's do a run file and see if there are any more errors that we see yes the process is done and complete so if you go check the google form i'm sure that you will see all these entries have been made since i've tried it a couple of times you will see more than one entry here form filling so you'll see i have got about 21 entries because i tried it three times so fundamentally it has run the whole course the workflow is working that's it for now